So I'm in the back of the truck again, going home from church, and the Lord impressed upon me to share this live video with you today and to explain um, a parable that our Lord Jesus Christ spoke about in Luke chapter 10. And so I wanted to read that to you. It's the story of the Good Samaritan. So Luke chapter 10, I'm going to read it. Okay, so my head's going to be down a little bit. It's my Bible. Okay, so it says that Jesus was talking. He was talking to a lawyer, and the lawyer had asked him what he must do to inherit eternal life. Well, the fact that he said inherit means that he doesn't do anything. Like an inheritance is given because you are a child, not because you've done something. So, um, so that's ridiculous anyway. But he said... Jesus told him to love his neighbor as himself, and the the Bible says that the lawyer, wanting to justify himself, asked, well, who's my neighbor? You know, kind of being a smart aleck. And so Jesus really shows up, and he says to him, he says, I'm going to tell him this story, right? And the reason that Jesus spoke in parables is because the hearts of people that he was speaking to in parables were not ready to hear the truth. And so he gave it to them in parables in so that they could kind of figure it out on their own. In other words, they were too hard-hearted to hear the truth from the mouth of the Lord. So, so here's the story. It says in chapter 10, verse 30, it says, Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell in among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him dead. Now by chance, a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, bandaged his wounds, and poured oil and wine on, and he set him on his own animal and brought him to the inn and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take him take care of him and whatever more you spend when I come back I will repay you so which of these do you think was neighbor to him who fell in among thieves now of course the lawyer to whom Jesus was speaking at the time he um, figured out that it was the Good Samaritan that was the neighbor and Jesus said go and do likewise and show mercy because God desires mercy not sacrifice so let me break down this parable for you sorry the light is really bad in here because I'm in the back of the truck maybe if I turn this way okay so here's the thing is this man was wounded the city of Jerusalem is metaphoric for the city of God okay and the city of Jericho is metaphoric for the city of man so this man this is a parable it's not a true story this man was going from God's place to man's place and he was attacked by thieves if you you know as soon as you leave God's presence you open yourself up to be attacked okay so this man goes down and he's attacked by thieves and they leave him wounded and in the street. And a leave, I mean, and a priest comes by first. The priest is a metaphor for religion. Religion will leave you. Religion will leave you bleeding and it will leave you hurt and destitute. You know why? Because religion says if you don't pay your tithes, if you don't give to the church fund, I'm not helping you. That's what that's what religion says. If you sin, if you left the presence of God, go down in the presence of man, then you did this to yourself and therefore you deserve everything you got. That's what religion does. The next person to come and see him was a Levite. And that's where the law comes in. Oh, you know, um, they broke the rules by leaving the, the city of God and going to the city of man. And so they got what they deserved. So I'm not going to help them because if I help them, they won't ever learn their lesson. See, that's not neighborly either. That's judgment. That's judgment in your hearts. So that's telling you that religion and the law are not going to help you when you are in a time of need don't turn to religion. When you are in a time of need, don't turn to people who are defenders of the law. When you are in a time of need, turn to the Good Samaritan. So Jesus comes to him. And so this, this parable is to teach us about how to, how to take care of our neighbors. It's to teach us who our neighbors are. But it's also a parable that's a metaphor for the end times. You see, because there was a time for priests. And then there was a time for the law. And now there's a time for love. Okay, now we're in the dispensation of love. And so what does Jesus do? Jesus goes to him as the Good Samaritan. Many times Jesus is called the Good Samaritan. Jesus goes to him and he pours oil and wine on. Okay, and that's um, that was used at that time to treat wounds. And so he does this and he sets him on his own animal, probably a donkey I'm guessing, and takes him to the inn. And he takes care of him for a little time. And then he gives the innkeeper 
two coins enough for two days worth of care and payment. This is a metaphor for the Holy Spirit. In other words, Jesus is the good Samaritan in the story. We, man, fallen man, who left the, the care and, and, and the blessing of God it, during the fall in the garden, we went to the city of man. We went to see things as they are with the knowledge of good and evil. And we fell in among thieves, right? Because the devil comes to steal, he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. And so that's the thief in the story. So we are the neighbor. We are the ones laying in the street, bleeding with nothing left, right? And Jesus is the good Samaritan in the story. And so he comes and he takes us to the innkeeper. Well, who's the innkeeper in the story? The innkeeper in the story is the Holy Ghost. And so Jesus gave him enough for two days worth of care. This is prophetic that Jesus is going to be gone only a little bit longer than 2,000 years. Why? Because the Bible says a day is as a thousand years and 1,000 years is as a day in your kingdom. And so this is really prophetic. It not only teaches us how to handle um, people who are who are destitute, who are hurting, we don't, we don't throw the law at them. We don't throw religion at them. We don't say, you know, you should have read your Bible more. Maybe you wouldn't be in the position that you're in, or you shouldn't do that because it's against the, um, the 10 commandments. You wouldn't be in the position you're in. No, that's judgment. Jesus says, you deal with it. You bandage their wounds and you handle them. By the way, Samaritans were, were half Jew and half Gentile. So they were hated by both sides, just like us just like Jesus. We are a new creation, right? We're one third Holy Ghost on the inside of us and we still have human flesh. Our flesh hasn't been redeemed yet. And so we're just like Jesus. We, he's the firstborn about, among many brethren. He is the head of the new creation, right? Old things have passed away. All things have become new. I'm a new creation. Just like this, this Samaritan was not normal. He wasn't pure. He was half and half, just like we are. We are God. We have God on the inside of us meaning and we are still humans okay and so this is how we're supposed to treat our neighbors but understand that this is also a prophecy for when Jesus is coming back he's given us to the innkeeper who's taking care of us and he's given the innkeeper which is the Holy Spirit everything he needs to take care of us until Jesus returns Jesus cre Jesus Christ gave us over to a very capable comforter a very capable provider a very capable teacher and director so I just wanted to share that story with you and, and, and ask you to ask yourself, how many times do you judge your neighbor for falling in to pain and trouble and wickedness because it's their own fault? And we know better because we know the Bible, right? We know what's right and we know what's wrong. And so we come at them with judgment instead of oil and wine, instead of giving up our money to take care of these people. And shame on us but I also want you to see the prophetic side and everything in the Bible is manifold everything in the Bible has more than one meaning okay so don't forget that if y'all have any questions feel free to message me and remember that Jesus loves you and I love you y'all have a blessed Sunday bye bye